Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to start off with a few housekeeping items. To the right of your screen, there is a chat box. So if you're just joining us, please take a moment and uh, type in your name. Let us know who you are. Let us know where you are joining us from. And uh, there are a few buttons down at the bottom for you to be aware of. There is a polls button. So if you want to pop in there and um, fill out the poll question, that would be awesome. There's an ask a question button right next to that. So if you have any questions, hello, Michelle. Uh, if you have any questions, just um, click on that button and you're certainly welcome to put the question in the chat box, but if you put it in the ask a question box, that will give you, give me an opportunity to know um, what are the most popular questions so I can make sure to answer those first. So if you have a question, click on that link. And then uh, if you see that someone else has already asked that question, just upvote the question. And that lets me know that that's a really popular topic that everyone wants the answer to. And then to the left of the ask a question button is a call to action button, which is going to light up later on. So stay tuned for that. So I want to start us off and get us good and grounded, kind of letting go of whatever things we were focused on, um, focused on before to, and uh, earlier today and really get present. I have some really important information to share with you today. So I want you to be really grounded and present here so that you can take this in and it can be as helpful as it can for you. So go ahead and get in a comfortable position. If you have a TV on or you, you have your phone, put your phone down for a moment, turn it on silent. And once you've gotten in a comfortable position, feel free to close your eyes and you can turn your gaze downward slightly or softly if you would prefer that. Although you cannot always control the mind, you can encourage it to be more at ease. Learning to do this will help you respond rather than react to your thoughts and emotions. This practice gives you the opportunity to train the mind to slow down when it becomes overactive and helps you practice ease and relaxation instead of perpetuating those diff difficult mental states. You can sit upright or lie down for this practice. If you're experiencing anxiety or stress in this moment, lying down may encourage relaxation. Take a few deep breaths. Inhaling, filling the lungs completely. Hold the breath for just a second or two and exhale slowly. As you let the breath go, try to empty the lungs slowly and completely. Recognizing that you cannot control every thought that arises, connect with your intention to relax the mind. If thoughts are present, just leave them be. Offer yourself two simple phrases of kindness towards the mind. May my mind be at ease. May I be at ease with my mind. Synchronize these phrases with your exhale, offering one phrase every time you breathe out. 
So take a nice slow inhale. And as you exhale, think, may my mind be at ease. Taking another inhale. And as you exhale, may, my, may I be at ease with my mind. Hear each word and try to connect with your own intention to care for the mind. Inhaling. May my mind be at ease. Inhaling. May I be at ease with my mind. When the thinking mind starts up, come back to the breath and the phrases. Even if you can only say one phrase before the mind wanders, you are still moving towards relaxation by continuing to practice. Completing this exercise, allow the eyes to open and return to the activity of daily life. Watch your mind during the day, noticing when it becomes uncomfortable or agitated, and try taking a few breaths using these simple phrases. All right, I hope everyone's feeling a little bit more grounded, a little bit more relaxed now. All right, let me get this started. My intention for this webinar is to permanently change how you feel your body. In order for that to happen, you will need to be here 100% with that same intention. I need for you to listen and take part fully as if your life depended on it, because it does. Your life will turn out completely differently when you're eating well and you understand food. Because what we eat changes everything. Our food goes into our stomach, and as it gets digested, it gets absorbed into our blood. Our blood is what creates our cells, our tissues, our organs, even our thoughts. We think differently when we eat meat than when we eat broccoli. So here's a chance to get a handle on what you eat and drink. Not through willpower or discipline, but by understanding what may be causing the symptoms that you're expecting and that controlling that are controlling your life and how to improve your quality of life. The word diet has gained quite a negative reputation. It is often associated with an unsustainable and unenjoyable way of eating, such as calorie restricting or cutting out entire food groups long-term. However, when diets are administered in a maintainable manner, they can be incredible tools. In particular, the elimination diet is structured to gain a better understanding of how your body reacts to certain foods. It is a short-term eating plan that eliminates certain foods that are common and causing bodily distress. Then you reintroduce these foods one at a time to truly uncover how your body responds to them. At first, it may seem intimidating to eliminate many foods from your diet at once but experimenting with your diet is one of the only ways to understand how to properly nurture your body. 
A food allergy is de defined as an unpleasant or dangerous immune system reaction after a certain food is eaten. More than 170 foods have been reported to cause allergic reactions, and an estimated 15 million Americans suffer from at least one food allergy. In contrast, Food sensitivities are not an immune reaction, but have a wide range, wider range of repercussions on the body. The tricky part is that food allergies and sensitivities manifest in a number of different ways, and while they are usually self-diagnosable, they can be easily misinterpreted. Do you suffer from digestive distress, respiratory issues, rashes, water retention, acne, migraines, congestion, fatigue, irritability, or brain fog. The culprit very well might be on your plate, but there's no way of knowing without isolating the offender. The major food allergens recognized by the Food and Drug Administration include milk, eggs, peanuts, wheat, soybeans, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. There are many other foods that cause adverse reactions in people, but these eight groups account for 90% of food allergic reactions. Many of the foods we eat are derived from these ingredients, so it can take some real investigative work to work to sort through these. Food companies have become quite skillful in hiding certain foods in our daily diets. Luckily, regulations on food labeling have made it much more accessible for the consumer to be aware of what they're eating. The common food allergens listed on my last slide particularly, are particularly easier to spot on an ingredient label, as now it must be stated if ingredients are derived from one of these foods. For example, you may see flour and then wheat in parentheses as clarification that the flour used in the product contains wheat. Additionally, at the end of the ingredient list, if there are any common allergens included in the product, you will see a bolded list of what the products contain. So I'm going to um, share a poll so I see um, you guys have started the, the first poll question and um, those of you who have responded say, no, you have not um, ever done an elimination diet. So now I'm gonna ask, do you usually look at the ingredients label on the packaged foods that you eat? So go ahead and answer that poll question and let me know yes or no if you are in, in the habit of reading the labels. And, you know, you can also type this in the chat if you want and let me know if you've ever noticed these allergen statements that have been on um, the food packages just recently. The list of foods to exclude during an elimination diet is comprehensive and may be a bit intimidating. However, it is designed to really help you understand how great your body is supposed to feel and what foods may be sabotaging your health. You want to eliminate dairy, gluten, soy, corn, eggs, refined sugar, peanuts, red meat, alcohol, caffeine, hydrogenated oils, and packaged and processed foods. Everybody is different. Therefore, the reaction people experience to certain foods varies widely. So up next, I'll be going over the why behind most of the, these, behind most of the foods eliminated on the elimination diet. Three in four of all people are unknowingly intolerant to dairy-containing foods. Some people experience digestive stress due to a sugar in milk, known as lactose, while others experience inflammation 
increased allergies, asthma, and acne due to the protein beta casein A1 found in cow's milk. This usually does not show up on formal allergy tests. Some symptoms that are common to be present with dairy intolerance include headaches, persistent cough, asthma, frequent colds, sinus pain, skin problems, bloating, irritable bowel, oh, an irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. Gluten is a mixture of proteins found in various grains, such as wheat, barley, and rye. It is often found in baked goods, bread, and cereals, but doesn't stop there. Gluten can also be found in unexpected places as well. For example, there is gluten in soy sauce, canned soups, instant coffee, and more. Over 1.5 million people in the United States suffer from a sensitivity to gluten. Whether it's from celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, the body produces an abnormal immune response when trying to digest gluten. The gluten-free diet has become very popular in recent years, but not only for those who suffer from intolerance. Many people do not eat gluten out of choice versus health need. While it is unclear if this is a responsible thing to do in regards to our digestive health, it is important to truly know if you are suffering from this intolerance. Approximately 90% of corn and soy products are from GMO crops. There's currently not enough evidence to suggest that consuming GMOs has adverse effects on human health. However, overproduction is a problem within itself. Soy and corn are amongst the largest United are among the largest United States farm com commodities. Because of this mass production, they sneak into our food at an alarming rate. Corn is a staple in almost all processed foods in the form of high fructose corn syrup, vegetable oil, and many preservatives. Soy too is heavily processed, has a high yield, and is added into the majority of our food supply. Soy is an endocrine disruptor, and when eaten in excess, can have adverse effects on the balance of your hormones in your body. Sugar promotes inflammation in the body, elevates blood glucose levels, and increases insulin production. It also offers an insignificant amount of vitamins and minerals, receiving the title as an anti-nutrient. Unfortunately, sugar hides in a lot of the food we eat every day. Some surprising places you'll find sugar include ketchup, salad dressings, protein bars, peanut butter, oatmeal, and so many more. Sugar can cause a host of different health issues, including, but not limited to, diabetes, heart disease, depression, and obesity. All right, so I'm going to go back. I have another poll question for you. Let's see. So it looks like you guys are on the right track and um, checking out those food labels. So I'm going to ask another question. Do you feel like you have a lot of sugar cravings? So go ahead. Oh, yeah. Answer that right away. <laughs> so you guys are having some sugar cravings. All right. That's good to know. Hydrogenated oils are chemically altered to turn liquid oils into a solid form. They are added to foods to increase shelf life and flavors. These oils are proven to create chronic inflammation and in turn encourage disease. Hydrogenated oils can be found in foods such as coffee creamers, vegetable shortening, margarine, fried foods, and packaged snacks. Foods with hydrogenated oils also have been also often have saturated fats. The best bet in spotting these dangerous oils is to always look through the nutritional facts and ingredient lists on food labels. 
Did you know that one the one eight ounce cup of coffee has approximately 95 milligrams of caffeine? Consuming just 200 milligrams of caffeine or just over two true cups of coffee a day can lead to addiction. Yet more than 21 million Americans drink an average of six or more cups of coffee each day. Caffeine increases sugar cravings, destabilizes blood sugar levels, and even weakens the adrenal glands. While caffeine has some beneficial effects in small amounts, it is important to eliminate it during this diet to properly detoxify your body. Consuming alcohol during an elimination diet can cause a lot of confusion in the body for a number of reasons. First off, you may even be intolerant to the alcohol. It could be caused by the foods used to produce alcohol, such as grains or grapes, or other ingredients used in the production like yeast and natural flavorings. It is also possible to experience intolerance to histamine, which is also featured in alcohol. Histamine is a chemical involved in many of your body's processes, such as your immune, nervous, and digestive systems. Even if there's no sensitivity present, alcohol disrupts the body's natural ability to detox, eradicate inflammation, and disqualify various allergies. The optimal time to keep these foods out of your diet is 21 to 23 days. This is very important because it's unlikely that you will notice a difference if you reintroduce these foods back into your diet sooner. It takes approximately three weeks for the antibodies responsible for the negative food-related immune reactions to dissipate. Shortening this elimination period can affect the validity of this experiment. In other words, you will not experience relief from your symptoms if you do not give your body enough time without the foods that may be causing them. One common mistake in participating in an elimination diet is focusing on what you have to eliminate versus embracing the things that you are still able to eat. Foods to include in your diet while going through the elimination phase include gluten-free grains, rice, quinoa, amaranth, tapioca, buckwheat, and teff, dairy substitutes, almond milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, and rice milk, vegetables except corn, whole fruits, either fresh, frozen, or water-packed, lean and clean animal protein, like wild game, lamb, organic chicken, fresh fish, nuts and seeds, beans in most legumes, except soybeans and peanuts, high quality oils like coconut, avocado, and cold pressed olive, herbal teas, and uh, sweetener alternatives in moderation, like honey, blackstrap molasses, or brown rice syrup, and spices. When you focus on all the foods included in the elimination diet, it doesn't seem quite as challenging. The structure of the elimination diet is just as important as the comprehensive eliminate list. After the three week elimination phase, you will transition into the re into reintroducing the food back into your diet. During the reintroduction phase, it is imperative to pay attention to how each food makes you feel. This is done by reintroducing food groups one by one for 48 hours at a time. You would pick one food to include in your diet again and take note of how it makes you feel for the next two days. Try the same process again for an additional two days. If you don't notice any issue for those four days, you can choose to reincorporate that food into your regular diet. Follow these steps with the remaining eliminated food groups. If any foods seem to cause any health issues, stop eating them and wait until any symptoms subside before continuing the process. All right, so here's some extra tips to help you be successful with this program. You wanna plan ahead. 
Having food readily available that you can eat sets you up for success. Read labels. As mentioned before, a lot of potential allergens hide in many of the foods we eat every day. Embarking on an elimination diet requires reading ingredient labels to ensure that you do not ex accidentally consume food that may disrupt the results of the diet. Stay hydrated. It's common to confuse dehydration for hunger. Remembering to drink enough water throughout the day will help control cravings and satiety. Write it out. Keeping a journal to track your initial symptoms, how you feel while eliminating and reducing certain foods, and your overall experience with the elimination diet provides an incredible amount of inf information on your health and potential food intolerances. So let's look at some common mistakes that are made when people have done elimination, elimination diets in the past. Quitting at the beginning. It's not uncommon for you to feel worse during the first few days. This happens because your body is essentially withdrawing from foods your body is used to having. Especially if your body's default is a high state of inflammation, it takes different mechanisms for your body to find its balance while healing. The second common mistake is lacking nutrient-dense foods. While there are many foods that you do not eat while on the elimination diet, there are still plenty allowed. However, limiting yourself to only a short list of foods rather than implementing a lot of variety can lead to a lack of nutrients that, you're, that are needed for your body. The third mistake is failing to plan ahead. Without efficient planning, you put yourself in the position of falling off the plan. It is very important to stick true to the elimination diet or else you will significantly skew your results. And then skimping on the reintroduction phase. The reintroduction phase is crucial in uncovering potential food sensitivities and intolerances. If you do not follow the systems of introducing one at a time, it's hard to differentiate what food is truly causing which symptoms. So here's some different recipe ideas that you can use while you're on an elimination diet. Turkey apple breakfast hash, spaghetti squash hash browns, garlic mushroom quinoa, chicken avocado lettuce wraps, falafel hummus salad bowl, zucchini turkey meatballs, that's a family favorite, and coconut cake. Like who knew you could eat cake on an elimination diet, but you can. This one, this recipe is for banana coconut cake with agave frosting. So if you've ever done, I think most of you said you haven't done, but if anyone who's hopped on um, after the, that poll and you've done any kind of elimination diet and you have a go-to recipe, um, feel free to share that in the chat with us. So I'm going to pop this um, link into the chat. This is for a recipe simulator where you can input ingredients that you have or ingredients that you'd like to work with, and it like spits out different recipes that you can use. I know that I just shared a ton of information with you and it may be a bit overwhelming. So I'm going to ask another poll question and let me know, are you feeling overwhelmed? Does it, the thought of doing this on your own kind of overwhelm you? <laughs> making you feel like you're not sure if you can do it. If you do feel overwhelmed, that is totally okay. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mishra Keller, and I received my training at the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York City. I'm also the founder and director of NutriZults, and what we do there is work with women to create practices and habits that make self-care their number one priority so that we can experience less pain and less stress, get better sleep, feel great in our bodies, and love who we see in the mirror. When it comes to food, we help our community members using the concept that there is no one right diet. We know that with all the conflicting health and nutrition information out there, it can be challenging for women to figure out what to eat. 
And basically what we do at NutriZults is to help you do that. We know that each person is an individual and there are different factors at play, such as age, ancestry, blood type, what you're up to. They all have an impact on what you need to eat. The real answer is to figure out how to listen to your body and in a way that allows you to be flexible with your food for the rest of your life. We take the time to learn how to drive a car, how to graduate from school, how to work our computer, the three remotes on our, for our TVs, but we never take the time to learn how to operate us. And now is the time to take your time and your money and put it towards figuring this out once and for all. I'm here to help you do that. We want you to enjoy what you eat. It's totally fine if you're afraid to try spirulina. We're going to help you find ways that allow you to thoroughly enjoy your food. We want you to be really healthy. We also want you to love what you're eating. You don't have to eat twigs and tofu to be a healthy person. We can help you start wherever you are, whether you're eating McDonald's every day, not cooking very much, or if you're someone who is already eating healthy. We can help you fine tune where you are with your diet and nutrition. I worked with a client a few years ago who was a vegetarian and she was having issues with sugar cravings. And so we worked together to figure out some naturally sweet foods that she could eat as a snack at work. She added in dried fruit as a snack, and she said it worked like magic. One of the ways that we help people is by looking at what Integrated Nutrition calls primary food and secondary food. Secondary food is the food that we eat. Your primary foods are your career, relationships, physical activity, and spirituality. And we find that once your primary foods are in balance, what you eat starts to become secondary. So whenever there's an imbalance in one food area, it causes an imbalance in another. And a lot of people use food, consciously or unconsciously, to numb out from what's not working in their life. We can help you work through that and restore balance in all of your food areas. So here's your opportunity. On November 1st, we are starting our Elimination Diet Focus Group. I'm putting together a special group of 10 women who are dealing with digestive distress, like bloating, excess gas, constipation, diarrhea, and IBS, skin issues like acne, eczema, dry or itchy skin, Respiratory problems like heavy mucus production, regular colds, joint pain, migraines, brain fog, and or fatigue. We will be working together as a group and following a specialized program. My goal is for you to really get a handle on these specific issues so that you can experience a better quality of life. The program runs for 30 days plus one pre-program prep week from November 1st to November 30th. So what's included in the program? You're going to get an elimination food program specifically designed to heal your gut, improve digestion, reduce inflammation, and improve liver function. You're going to get access to the Meal Garden website, a recipe and meal planning platform that makes it easy to consistently create healthy, nutrient-dense, and delicious meals. You're going to get meal plans, recipes, and grocery shopping lists. You're going to get four one-hour virtual group coaching calls. You'll get one week of pre-program prep to help you set you up for success. And that will be from October 26th through the 31st. You'll receive step-by-step -step guidance and support from a seasoned, certified holistic health coach, which is me. And you'll get support from other women like you who want to value their health and prioritize their wellness. So here are a few things that clients have said who have done elimination diets with me in the past. 
Trust and see says, I feel more energized and I'm sleeping better. I don't even need an alarm to wake up. Mary H said, this detox program has made me feel 20 years younger. The cost of this program is $11.98, but if you register before Monday, October 19th, you will pay the early bird price of $5.99.99. So in addition to, sorry, I'm trying to, there it is. So there's the call to action button there. In addition to um, the, that special pricing for signing up for the early bird uh, pricing, if you take action today, you're going to receive four early bird bonuses that are valued at over $200. The first bonus that you're going to receive is one month full access membership to the Nutrizults community. The Nutrizults community is a virtual community that brings together women who want to value their health and prioritize their wellness to build the practices and habits that make self-care their number one priority. This access level includes unlimited virtual fitness and wellness classes that includes pound fitness, melt method, and meditation classes. And this bonus is valued at $119. The second early bird bonus is a beginner pound masterclass. This virtual class gives you a chance to learn how to channel your inner, inner rock star with a full body cardio jam session inspired by the infectious, energizing, and sweat dripping fun of playing the drums. And this bonus is valued at $25. The third early bird bonus, you're gonna get access to my eight secrets to stop emotional eating today in class. In this class, you will learn the secrets to harnessing the power of your emotions in eight simple steps and stop eating your feelings. You will come away with an action plan that you can use right away. And this bonus has a $29 value. And the last bonus, you'll receive 10% of 10% discount on any melt tools that you purchase. This will allow you to take full advantage of your full access membership and equip you with the right tools to hydrate your connective tissue. The melt method classes will enable you to reduce and for some people eliminate your chronic pain, improve your proprioception, strengthen and stabilize your body, and reduce signs of aging like, like cellulite and sagging skin. So I just want to share with you another experience that a client had. Um, this is from Julie J. She says, I spilled something on my pants one morning on my way out the door going to work. And the only other thing I had to wear was a pair of pants that I hadn't worn in a long time because they were too small. I tried them on anyway, and they zipped right up. So some of my VIP community members have already expressed interest in this program and have asked some great questions. And I wanted to share them with you in case you were wondering the same thing. So the first question is, what kind of time commitment is involved? All of the information that you need to create your meals is online, so you can access it at your convenience. The four coaching calls will be about an hour long, and the pre-program work may take you about two to three hours to complete. The second question is, will the coaching calls be recorded? Yes. If you aren't able to make a live call, you can email your questions ahead of time, and I will be sure to answer them for you. The third question was, what if I mess up the program? This program is not about being perfect. It's about taking the time for yourself and developing the practices and habits that will empower you to take better care of yourself. It's a process. And that's why we're taking a whole month to do it. And what you put into practice now can be carried forth to continue your success. And the last question is, will I have to cook every day? No, you will want to cook as many of the meals as you can in order to ensure the quality of the ingredients used. But the meal plan accounts for using leftovers during each week. So here's one more quote, one of the, my favorite ones from Heather P. She said that after she did an elimination diet program, 
She said, I feel like a different person, better, lighter. So I love this quote by George Adair. And George Adair said, everything you've ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear. When I was in nutrition school, IAN founder Joshua Rosenthal would tell us all the time, feel the fear and do it anyway. So if what you heard today has resonated with you and you're ready to start living a better quality of life, don't wait. Click on the call to action button at the bottom of the screen and register for our elimination diet focus group today. Space is limited to 10 spots and there's already been a lot of interest in this program. And remember, the early bird pricing goes away on Monday, no October 19th. Um, and then the price doubles back to $11.98. Thank you all so much for taking the time to experience my Elimination Diet Made Simple class. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them in the questions area. Or you can email me at mishra at nutrizults.com. If you're already a NutriZots community member, you can message me there too. So I'm just going to real quick check, see if there's any questions. Feel free to pop something in the chat if you like. All right, so it doesn't look like anyone has any questions. All right. So again, thank you so much for being here. And for those of you who have already signed up for the program, yay! I cannot wait to support you in your success. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.